Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Fruit Ninja series in Scratch. This is part two. Today we're going to be adding functionality so that we can use our, mo our mouse pointer to slice the fruits and have them split. So the first thing we need to do is drag in a when I start as clone and we're going to check if this is the unsliced fruit. And the way to do that is to use the same block of code, uh, of code if clone type equals fruit. And then we're going to drag in a forever if to check if we're touching our, our mouse pointer. So go to sensing, drag in this touching mouse pointer. Um, and what we're going to do is spawn the other slices of the fruit and the splat in the back as well, just like in the real game. So like there'll be the fruit juices that kind of spurt out when you slice the fruit. So we're going to go into variables and we're gonna say set clone type to, we'll do left first, and then we will create a clone of myself. Then we will do right. And then finally, we will create the splat. And then we're going to delete our original unsliced fruit, since it's now sliced, and just deal with these three. So if we see what happens, you can see that it spawns those. And since we added this piece of code, those clones will already go to the correct costume, which is great. Uh, the next thing we need to do is add our functionality for these different types of clones. So let's create some more space. Say when I start as clone, if, and then we're going to drag in this same piece of logic, except we're going to say if clone type is left, then we're going to have to do some code. So first of all, a lot of it is already managed because when you create a clone of myself, it copies the variables and the values of them into the new clone. So you really just have to adjust. So we're going to say set clone XV to pick random. And since this, is, since this is on the left side, we want to be negative number. So negative one to say negative four. And then we're going to drag in a forever. And it's going to be this kind of same piece of logic. And since we want it to turn a little bit more, instead of doing divide by four, we're gonna do divide by two. So it'll just, you know, once you slice it, it speeds up a little bit. So let's see how the left looks. You can see that the left is falling off in uh, the way we want it to. And I'm gonna actually decrease the size to maybe 20. Um, and that looks better. And so you can see the left is working. Now we wanna do something similar to the right. And so what we could do is just do this and changes to positive one to positive four. Uh, but there's actually a better way to do that, and that is to create our own blocks. When you see yourself repeating code like this, it's probably best to create a new block. So we're gonna call this move sliced fruit. And there's gonna be an input so that uh, the scratch knows whether it's the left or the right one. We're gonna call this just XV. And you'll be able to control whether we want the slice to go left or right with that uh, parameter right there. So we're gonna put this here um, and we're going to do pick random for one to four and then use the multiplication operator and do this times XV. Now we can remove both of these and just drag in the block that we just created. So we can say move slice fruit negative one since we want these to go in a negative side so these will become negative numbers. And then for the right side we want it to go one. So let's see how this looks. Awesome. You can see we already have our slicing mechanics that look great. Let's handle the splat really quickly. So it's something very similar. We can do it in the same piece, in the same script here. And we're gonna say if clone type equals splat, uh, we're gonna first go to the back layer so that it doesn't come in front of the slices. So let's see, where is that? Go to back layer. And then we're going to set our ghost effect to let's say 10, we don't want it to be fully uh, visible, we want a little bit of opacity there. And then we're going to say wait, let's say three seconds, and then repeat 90 times. And as you may guess, we're going to do a change ghost effect by one. So this one times 90 is gonna get us to 90 ghost effect, and since we're starting at 10, that gets us to 100, which means it's fully invisible. Um, and then we can delete the clone and that'll make a smooth transition. So let's see how this looks. Awesome, we've added our slicing functionality. Let's manage a few things so that we don't have these leftovers 
here at the bottom, they look kind of ugly. Um, and so the way we're going to do that is by adding a small piece of code for all of our clones. So when I start as clone, forever, if, and then there are two things we want to check for. So we're going to drag in an and. Firstly, we want to make sure that our Y position is less than negative 185. So go into motion and drag in the Y position. And we want to make sure that our um, YV is less than zero. And the reason we want to make sure this is happening is that obviously there are going to be two times when our fruit is at the bottom. One when it's getting launched and the other when it's falling. We want to make sure that it's falling and at that time we delete the clone. So, that, so to do that, to check for that, we're going to say and clone YV is less uh, than zero, I believe. And then, so basically it's going to be negative, meaning it's falling. Then we just delete this clone. And with that piece of code, I think our logic should be taken care of. And you can see that it is working. And the slices will disappear. Let's add a background as a last thing for this part. So we're going to upload backdrop. And I'm going to use this backdrop.png. And yeah. We now have a backdrop, we have splats, we have slicing, and it's looking pretty good so far. I will see you guys in part three where we will build out more of the game. See you guys there. Peace.